Hello everybody, welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome to the channel. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right in today. So this video is for if you are a new teacher or just a teacher looking for some different resources and things, or even some of these will apply to substitutes as well. But if you are a substitute teacher, please do not feel like you need to get any of these things, like it is expected of you because substitutes should not have to have any of those kind of responsibilities on them, but I always like to bring extra things as a sub, so just something to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and get started. So today I'm going to share five amazing teacher resources that I used when I was a full-time teacher. And you can use these, like I said, as a sub or just a regular classroom teacher as well. So these are great resources. Some of them are pretty basic, so you may have already heard of them before. However, some of them you might not have heard or even think to use them in certain ways. So hopefully something here will apply to you today. Also, let me know down in the comments down below if you have a favorite out of the ones that I shared today that you use all the time or one that you heard of that was completely new to you and that you're excited to try out. So let's go ahead and talk about the five amazing resources. The first one is TPT. So if you're in the teaching world or even studying to be a teacher or know pretty much anything about teaching or teachers in general, you might not even have to be a teacher to know about this one. But TPT stands for Teachers Pay Teachers. And so I wanted to not only share with you the resource, but how I used it specifically to help you the most. So you can use these resources in lots of different ways, but I wanna share with you the things that I found the most beneficial from these specific resources. So Teachers Pay Teachers is a great online resource and it can really help you if you want to find things just in general for your classroom, such as principles, very specific things too. And the nice thing about Teachers Pay Teachers is it's completely free. So the only time I ever actually spent money on Teachers Pay Teachers was probably $2 or less, and it was very specific things that I wanted. So if I wanted something Harry Potter themed for my Harry Potter themed classroom, I would splurge a little bit and spend the extra money just to get something that specific. However, the majority of the time that I use Teachers Pay Teachers, I would be only going to the free section. So there's so much free stuff on there that you can use and utilize. So I wanna share with you some of the ways that I specifically use Teachers Pay Teachers in my classroom for the mo like most of the time. So printable resources, Teachers Pay Teachers is great for printouts, worksheets, handouts, printable resources, even for teachers to parents. So use the printable resources that they have on Teachers Pay Teachers. Those are probably my favorite ways to use Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, newsletters, so newsletters, templates, and these can be printed out or you can use them and edit in them digitally. A lot of them have and then send out to email or dojo or whatever, however you communicate to parents. So I love newsletter templates. I love to change mine up for the different seasons or different months. That was really fun and Teachers Pay Teachers has lots of options to do that. And games as well. So games is the final way that I would probably use Teachers Pay Teachers. They have a lot of fun game ideas or things that you can print out to do. Teachers are so creative and that's the nice part about Teachers Pay Teachers because it really is a website where teachers or anyone who feels like that they can teach you something can share out resources. So the second one, and this might be one that you haven't heard of before. This one I actually got recommended from a reading specialist when I was teaching and she introduced me to this website and I have loved it and remembered it since because it was so helpful to integrate into my lessons online. So it's called Linktree. So this is something I had never heard of before she told me about it. And what it is, it's a website where people can create slides and different things and share them publicly online. At least that's how I used it. And I used it specifically for phonics. And so the link tree that I used for phonics, it had all these different themed fun slideshow presentations basically on it. And it would be great because it would be uh, blending boards for the kids in different ways that 
the arrows were set up where you could use the space bar or the arrow keys on your keyboard and it would have the kids blend out and put the words back together or the sounds back together to form a word or even nonsense words. So lots of different ways to integrate that, but my favorite way to use that resource of Linktree was for phonics, slides, and lessons. The third one, which hopefully you've heard about, and it also has kind of two resources, but Google Docs or um, Windows Word would be another one. So Word is probably the older version and Google Docs, I would say I like more than Word because Word is something that you have to pay for. But I like Google Docs so much because it can be shared anywhere. You can use it on your phone, on your computer. You can share out resources with other people. Anyone just has to either have the link or it has to be open to sharing. So lots of different ways. And Google Docs, the majority of the ways that I used Google Docs wasn't even to type things up like papers and things that you would do in college. Honestly, how I used Google Docs was typing in for resources for different websites that I was going to use. So what we did, my team teacher and I, we collaborated each week since we were both teaching the same grade at the time. And we would share different links to videos and slides and just different resources that we think could help each other out with each subject. And so we would go in and have a, let's say for example, week nine Google Doc and we would just put in different resources, drop them in as needed, and then we would use that to open up for the day. And we'd keep that tab open throughout the day to click on our resources, and it would be really easy to Zoom with the kids since I was a virtual teacher and be able to just click on the different resources that we had found for each other that go along with those lessons. So they were kind of supplemental resources to whatever curriculum that we were already using and just enhanced our lessons a lot. So that was a great resource for us to be able to use as those Google Docs because it allowed us to share and collaborate together more as a team. The fourth one is Google Slides. So PowerPoint is the older version of this, but I like Google Slides much better because when it's a Google application, it really can be shared easier, I believe, with everyone and just all you need is internet access and I can use it on my phone or computer and it's more user friendly that way. And so Google Slides is something that I used every single day as a virtual teacher. It's one of my favorite resources to have. I would put all of my curriculum that I was using embedded in Google Slides. I would put links to things that I could click on through the Google Slides. And it was also a great option because every lesson I was doing was virtual or online through Zoom. And so I would just present the slides to the kids and I would make different slides for different subjects. And it was just a great way to present and have the kids be engaged and looking at something. I also used other resources like whiteboards and markers and things like that, but it was really nice to have everything that we were saying or doing up on the screen for them to be able to really connect with and look at. And the fifth one, so this one is kind of a no-brainer, but at the same time, you might be like, oh, I don't really like to use that. Or if you don't have it, I completely understand. But if you do have it, I would highly, highly recommend utilizing it, is your own school's curriculum. So this might be kind of daunting, especially as a new teacher, because you might not understand how to read your curriculum yet. I know that was a big thing for me. When I was first starting out, I had no idea how to read the curriculum. I didn't understand it at all. It was so confusing. But the more I was in teaching, the more I understood it. And so looking at your own school's curriculum. So if you have a hard copy book that goes with your curriculum, obviously utilize that read through it, take time to understand it and really learn that book. But I would highly recommend to look online as well and see if there is a online version of your curriculum. Because with that, usually a lot of the websites that you can use for your curriculum will have different resources already embedded in them. So you don't have to go out on Teachers Pay Teachers and hunt for your resources and it's already there for you. I know a lot of the reading resources that I was using, they had slideshows already built, they had different reading passages for different reading levels already on there. There were so many things to utilize on the curriculum website. I just had to understand how to learn 
and learn how to use the website and be able to just search through it to find what I wanted. So hopefully one of these five or maybe all of them have helped you out today. Leave me a comment down below if you know any resources that can help other teachers out also. As teachers, it's great to be able to share. And even though I'm not a full-time teacher in the classroom anymore, I still love to share things that I learned on my journey as a teacher. So hopefully this video helped you today. If it did, make sure to like the video. Always leave me any comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And subscribe to the channel if you are new.